we're going to test is the Jive Easy by Wishard. This comes in two parts, the Jive Easy itself, which is this, and then the Jive Flex, which is the dedicated rope they supply to go with it. The controlling line for Jive Easy is led from the cockpit to a turning block at the base of the shrouds, to the other turning block and then back again. The Jive Easy itself should be hung from a bale underneath the boom forward of the van. For this test, we've just set up a strop here. And then finally, to create the friction, the Jive Flex, this rope, goes through the device the more times it goes through, the more friction you have. Finally locks off there. And Wishard recommend that as wind or sea conditions increase, you should increase the amount of friction. So if I want more friction, I'll just go through three times. One, two, three. There we have it. Typically today there's not a lot of wind for us to test this, however you can see at the moment we've got two loops through the device, so quite a bit of friction, and when I pull it's really quite difficult to get the boom to come in. However if I reduce down to one wrap, then this time when I pull then the boom will come over. So this one is the Walder boom brake. Um, and the idea with this is it's actually fitted permanently. So we've taken the van off. It can be fitted in addition to the van. However, Walder recommend that you actually take the van off and this is used instead. We're now setting up the lines for the Walder boom brake. Again, uh, the line comes from the cockpit so that the whole thing can be controlled from the cockpit. Then up to a turning block here. Now Walder say this could be on the tow rail. Um, however, we don't have that facility here, so we've done it off the chain plate again. Then we're going to rig it through the boom brake. So we go through the Frida here, and then the rope's going to pass a minimum of two times around the brake. I just need to work out which way it's going. Obviously the more wraps around the more friction. So I'm going to leave it just with two wraps round. And then through the feeder on the other side. So the main difference between this Walder boom brake and the Jibe Z is that this one really needs to be set up before you go out and it's left on permanently. Whereas with the Jibe Z you can just take a bite of rope and thread it through to rig it up. This one has to be rigged up all of the time. So the way the Walder works is by using the tension of this rope here. Um, the more tension you have, it will actually just pin the boom in any position at all. So at the moment, we've got quite a lot of tension on and I can't move that boom at all. But as we just gently ease the tension using the controlling line in the cockpit, then we can get varying degrees of movement. So letting the tension off a bit and the rope starts to slide for a controlled jibe. Or if you wanted to tack or jibe quickly, you could just let that tension off completely. So now there's a bit of breeze, we can see the boom brake in action during a jibe. So at the moment there's a lot of tension on the line, which is going to hold it in place. Then as we come round for the jibe, I'm going to gently ease the tension off and we'll see the boom come across the centre in a controlled manner. So we're locked off, and now I'm just going to ease. We can't really talk about jibe preventers without just running through the old tried and tested cheap method of using a rope only. Um, so anybody obviously can do this one. We're just going to, in this case, I'm just going to loop 
the rope around the end of the boom and I'm going to tie it on with quite a long bowline so that means I don't actually have the to have the boom dead in the centre of the boat and I'm going to take the rest of the line up to the foredeck so the important thing with this line is that I've led it up forward and then back down to a winch in the cockpit so that again I can control the preventer from the cockpit so this preventer here doesn't technically stop the boat from jibing but it does keep the boom out once the wind has filled on the other side of the sail so you'll see in a moment the wind starts to fill on the other side of the sail and the preventer is now loaded up taking that load and I could either steer back to get the wind on the right side of the sail or just very gently and carefully bring this back into the centre line. Obviously once you've passed centre line here this rope really isn't doing anything anymore. So this is a type of different type of product. This is the sail fuse. This isn't actually going to stop the boat from jibing. Um, what it's designed to do is save the rig if you do do a massive accidental crash jibe. So we've rigged up the sail fuse. Um, obviously you wouldn't normally do this at sea and you would have exactly the right components you need. Um, but just to show you, the idea is that it goes in line between your main sheet car and your main sheet block there. So we've just attached each end um, and because we didn't have a, a shackle that fit is there we've used our trusty bit of Dyneema again. Um, there's still not a lot of wind so the idea is just to show how this should rig up and the actual action of it breaking. So we've got our exploded sail fuse here and the idea is that when a massive load comes onto the fuse it will break so the example one that's been really lightly rigged up for us here has just sheared through with the force um, and then that force actually takes the brunt of the blow just saving then your traveller, your main sheet block and the makers of self use say it should save your rig as well. Hand on heart I think we can all admit to a dodgy moment jibing at some point even though there's not a lot of wind today, we've managed to look through some of the possible solutions for making jibes safer. And so whether your ultimate aim is to keep your friends and family sailing on a day out, or you want a relaxed time downwind trade wind sailing, I think there is a solution.